Okay, Mustang fans, friends, and family. Now that the car is mostly done, I'm moving on here to the engine compartment and the upgrade. And after many hours of investigation and research, I've come to the conclusion that there is no viable upgrade or replacement for an old Kenny Bell system other than buying their new system, which is $4,000 or $4,500 if you want the upgraded intake. So, I was originally trying to take this 1.5 unit and switch it to a 2.2, but you can't buy them new anymore, and people online are asking way too much money for used ones. And I video documented a perfect example of that last week, where one of these units... If one point, it was even a 1.5. Um, probably someone found them in the same situation I'm, I'm in here right now and decided, okay, I'm done with this. I'm just going to sell the whole thing online. And they start the bidding at $400, which, you know, it's respectable. It's a good parts donor. Well, it sold for way more than I would have paid for it at $910. And do you know that I saw it literally two weeks later same unit, um, didn't even bother to touch up the, uh, there were like nicks, there were giveaway signs, they didn't even bother to touch them up, selling it for $2,200, a $400 unit that was probably wasted for $2,200, bucks. and um, it's, it, these, the weak link, you know, just because it, it spins freely doesn't mean that it's good, because the weak link in these things are the seals, inside there are seals which keep the uh, the pressure going into the engine and and not oil into this through the seals into the engine and that's what happened to me. Um, this car sat for 13 years and the seals probably dried out and I found out after start getting it back on the road just last year that I mean I can't drive it 20 miles without filling the fluid on it. So I mean it, it does everything it's supposed to, but who wants to be opening their hood? every 20 miles checking and refilling the fluid on the thing so and it's time for an upgrade for me anyway because I'm I'm building this this engine actually I had this engine built and to withstand 18 psi in a fox body and um that's where I'm going so and I'm not going to sell this online I'm not going to auction it off I'm going because I, I don't want the same thing to happen because someone's going to buy it and then and then they're going to sell it for twice as much. And then the poor unsuspecting soul who gets it is going to blow it up because they're going to not realize that it's using oil. And the first thing that happens is this input shaft seizes. That's what happened to me. That's how I discovered it. All of a sudden, one day driving along, pop, and the car dies. Ended up being this pulley and part of the shaft separating and shooting into the hood. I got a new input shaft. There's a new input shaft on it. But and now I know, and it uses oil, so that's it. And I'm not I'm not paying four thousand for the same thing I have, or maybe a little bit better. I'm I'm like I said I'm I'm going with this engine, and I'm upgrading, going to Whipple, because that was kind of the idea from the beginning. We got the old Whipple charged thing going on there. So that's that, and um, in the process here, you know, trying to map out this new system, um, I decided I'm going to do a mock-up on the on the on the good engine because trying to do that stuff all while this is in here is just it's not it, it, you can't do it. You have to line up the pulleys, lining up the pulleys and everything. That's the big that's the big deal. So, original, my original plan, you know, and everybody would want to do it this way, is like on the new modulars, put the, put the supercharger right in the middle and feed it directly into the intake. But on these cars, the 5 liter, it's got no valley. So, you know, one thing you're going to have to do, you'd have to figure out some kind of dis distributor system here, you know, which you can do. But then you have to redesign a whole new intake. 
and that's I mean I'm not a metal metal fabricator I could just imagine what that would cost and even if you did trying to keep it under a stock hood I mean unless you run a six inch six inch cowl hood and uh, I'm not doing that because uh, that, those are for race cars and I drive this on the street so I want it to fit under the stock hood I think I only have a, a one inch cowl it's a fiberglass hood but it's got the smallest cowl you can get so it's got to fit under that so it's 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 not it's it's unreasonable to think that you can you can get it in the middle like on the modulars. It's just not going to happen without some kind of great expense. So I'm trying to do a budget build here. That was the that was the other idea all along. So and I, I think where am I going to put all this thing? And, and Kenny Bell had the right idea. I, there's no other place that it's going to work other than where it's at. So the only the difference is I'm moving it forward. I'm going to put a direct drive snout on that. It's going to move it forward. The discharge is going to be right here. The discharge tube is going to run over there in the linear cooler and then back into a CarTech car intake. Um, it's going to be rear feed because now that this has moved forward, I'm going to have 12 inches to work with back here for the throttle body, mass air, and induction. So that's the deal. That's the plan. And you know how are you gonna how are you gonna do that with the pulleys and stuff? Cause that's a challenge, right? Once you once you start playing with these offsets here. So what I figured out, what I did is um, you know why is all this junk bolted to this nice engine here? But that's my mock-up here. Um, you see, where I'm going with a dual belt setup. Uh, Vortec does this. They sell these pulleys for like 300 bucks or something stupid. And um, one of the options is a 7-inch crank pulley. And that's what I got here. Now this, this setup, um, it's an 89 Lincoln Town Car, believe it or not. Dual belt setup. 89 Lincoln Town Car. Bolts right on there. It's two belts. One thing about that you have to take note of is on that car it is a standard rotation water pump because this drives the water pump this way and so I'm gonna have standard rotation driving the accessories on this side including the blower and then the alternator is gonna have to drop down to about this location and then the other one is gonna drive the alternator but it's standard rotation and I'm getting, I didn't put the water pump on here because I'm not going to use the piece of junk that came off that car. I'm buying a new one there. This stuff's all getting cleaned up. I know it looks like crap now, but we'll see how that looks in a month. Um, yeah, because what the, the Lincoln Town Car water pump is going to do, it's going to bring, you know, have the pulley at the right offset that it's going to run off of this crank for which it was designed for. Now you say, well, you can make all your custom brackets and stuff, and then, 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 yeah, but you, when you start making all those brackets, you lose the integrity, the strength of the assembly. So I figured I took all the brackets from the 89 Lincoln Town Car. Um, you got the, the power steering pump here with, with that. Now the supercharger is going to be sitting somewhere up in this area, and that's all run on one side. And I did change the water outlet. I don't know if I'm going to stick with this one yet, depending on where the discharge tube is going to run across here. It might be in the way. That, that could be a problem. I might have to get one of those swivel ones. But, yeah, there's nothing going to be on top here. There's the idler for the alternator that's going to be re relocated down here. But that's the setup. That's the plan. 89 Lincoln Town Car. I'm doing this for my own documentation so I remember where all this this stuff came from too. So that's pretty much stage one. I think now the next step is to take this off and uh, part it out. So, like I said, it's a brand new snout. Um, the rotor pack inside there is fine. It's the seals. You know, you can't rebuild these things on your on your own either because to replace those seals you have to separate the rotor pack 
and then that, that takes a special tool to reassemble or you're going to grenade the thing. So that's it for now. Step one, um, this isn't going to happen overnight, so I guess I'll have to update this once a week and go from here.